Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. Now something that's come up recently um, a few times both on the forums and in personal correspondence that I've had with people is regarding symbols. Um, so I'd like to go over this just to explain uh, the way that we originally designed our software and how we fit symbols into that design. So when we originally started designing our software, we designed it in mind of um, a traditional process, uh, meaning that you know when you are drawing or animated on paper, you'll have um, usually a 12 or 16 field grid that you'll draw on, and you know you'll do various different drawings. So you know if I have a person's head, then you could have the head on a drawing. And then you might want to have separated out different drawings on different layers. So you might have a second drawing that's going to be your neck and another drawing that's going to be your body. And um, now if you want to actually connect these drawings together in a hierarchy, then the way to do that, the way to connect these together in a hierarchy, um, we don't use the concept of symbols at this point. And this is something where the people who come from a traditional background will have a much easier time coming to understand the way that we do our software because um, it is very similar to a traditional process. However, if you come from a Flash background, you'll be used to what they do in Flash. <clears throat> now in Flash, in order to have some kind of a hierarchy, what you in fact have to do is you have to create symbols out of each element and you will nest symbols inside of symbols in order to create your hierarchy. Now, you can work that way when you're working in Toon Boom products. However, it's not going to be to your advantage to work that way. It's not going to be the most efficient way to work that way. Uh, you know, if I want to take this drawing and create a hierarchy out of it where I make it a child of the next drawing down, I can just drag and drop it and make it a child. And now if I want to move both of those, you know, I can move both of them from that pivot point of the, you know, of the neck, let's say. I can move both of them together. And it's as simple as that. Um, of course, when you're working in Flash, you would, in this case instead, you would be creating nested symbols. Um, so I just want to explain that it's not to your advantage to do that, really, because let's say if I create a symbol out of this, and you have to create symbols, by the way, from the camera view. Um, so I could call this my head symbol. And then it will show up in my scene, and I can select my neck, and I can create a symbol out of that drawing as well. So, you know, I've got my neck drawing here. I want to select that drawing, and I can create a symbol out of that one. Let's call this one neck. I could do the same thing with my torso. Create a symbol, call it torso. And then I can actually go in and work on these ones, you know, if I, if I select edit symbol, now I'm going inside the symbol. And I could, within my symbol, drag and drop my next symbol in there. And I can now, you know, position these where they belong with respect to each other. And I could do the same thing now if I go inside my neck symbol. To edit that symbol, I can bring the head in here and then if I animate, now if I go back out to my main timeline, um, which I can do over here, and let's just get rid of the original drawings that I had in there. If I now, if I bring in my torso symbol, that torso symbol does contain all three of those symbols. And, but if I want to animate now, if I want to animate that neck, I actually have to go inside the torso you know, I have to edit the symbol, go inside of it, extend the exposure, and animate my neck from in here. And every time you want to animate something that's inside a symbol, you have to go inside that symbol. For that reason, it slows down the workflow. I know you might be familiar or comfortable working that way from coming from a Flash background, but really you want to take advantage of what our software is good at and what our software is good at is really good at is is character rigging so if we take a look at an example of um, a character rig in here let me just bring something in that I have done already um, let's bring in some animation on a character so actually that's not the one I want let me bring in let me bring in a regular there it is that's the one I want okay so here I've got my cutout character. Now, 
when you create your cutout character, if you create it with a simple hierarchy where you actually connect those elements together, and I can go up the chain with B, if you just connect those elements together directly in your timeline without making symbols out of them, you can animate everything from your main timeline right away. And you know, then you can have it actually interpolate between those two keyframes without having to do any additional entering inside the symbols. And this is so much easier to animate, um, you really don't want to go the symbol route. Um, so then some of you might wonder, okay, if symbols are not there for making character rigs the way that they are in Flash, what are they there for? Um, well, originally we added them in there to make Flash people comfortable with animating the way that they're accustomed to it if they want to. But the other thing that I think it is useful for is for doing things like um, cycles that you want to repeat a lot or elements that you want to update all at the same time. And there is an example in some of the learning videos and stuff about this skateboard. So this skateboard is a, is a good example of why to do a symbol. So let's say, for example, if I want to just draw one wheel and maybe I'll turn on my snap to contour as I'm drawing these guys to draw that wheel and I can go back with my cutter tool and I can cut out the piece that I don't want to have in there. So let's say that maybe I even want a, a wheel in the center there. Alright, so let's say that this is looking the way that I want my wheel to look. I might even want to color it in, so let's color it in with something that is a little bit of a gray color there. Maybe I'll have a darker gray for the back of the wheel and I might have a lighter gray on the inside of it here. Okay, so you know once I get my wheel done if I create a symbol out of this so I probably want to rename it something and I can create a symbol out of it let's call it wheel and now that symbol exists in my library um, then I can separately from this one of course create the actual skateboard so let's say, actually maybe I'll just create a rectangle here, kind of cheating to, to make it a bit easier on me so, so I have to do a little bit less drawing here. But let's say I want to do something like a skateboard, then I'll do something like that and I'll make it a bit rounded and I might hold down shift as I'm rounding the ends there to just round between those two points and then a little bit of a curve like that. Or do I want it curving the other way? Probably the other way. 